As we approach the door, I smell lots of dogs. Old dogs look like Rocky and new dogs I don't recognize. These dogs won't know what to think about Dinah's sparkly collar, but who cares? I'm about to see Connie. Connie, Connie. Dinah pulls the glass door open and I smell familiar humans. The strongest scents belong to Ava, who sits at the front desk and moves papers around all day, and Jake, who is the top man and drinks lots and lots of hot brown liquid with the strong biting smell. Underneath it all, there might be a hint of Connie, but I can't be certain. Ava looks up from her papers when the bells on the door jingle, then trots over to me. Oh, sweet Stella, you're back. We've missed you, sweet girl. She rubs my ears, wiggling my head back and forth gently, then leans in for a kiss. And she smells delicious, like donuts, milk, and kindness. But she sounds sad, too. And I wonder what's wrong with everyone today. It's a very, very happy day. Ava stands up like she's tired and extends her hand to Dinah. I I'm so sorry, Dinah stops in the middle of her words. Ava shakes her head, the sad water forms at her eyes, and the smell of salt mixes with all her sugary goodness. I tried. I really did, Dinah looks down at me. I know, Ava rests a hand on Dinah's arms. We were worried she might not make it. Sometime, sometimes dogs don't recover from that kind of trauma. There are too many starts and stops in their words. This isn't normally how the human talking works. When a door behind Ava's desk swings open, I jump, but it's Jake. He hasn't changed since the last time I saw him. He stands very tall and commands respect, like the top dog in the pack. And he smells exactly the same, all dark beans soaked in water, mixed with steak and chicken and ham. I wag my tail, but wait for him to call me before crossing the room to greet him. He lowers himself to the floor. Hi, Stella. Why are you back, girl? We wanted you to make a new life for yourself. He looks up at Dinah, but Dinah just shakes her head again as the salty water drips on her cheeks. Jake goes to her and places a big hand on her shoulder. You tried. We all tried. It just wasn't meant to be. Some dogs never get over that type of violent explosion. Sometimes they can't recover from losing their handlers and Stella suffered both at the same time. We'll take care of her. I wag my tail. We should all be happy. Dinah leans down to rub the loose skin on my neck. She kisses the top of my head. I understand that she's sad, so I lick her face. She smiles, and a sobbing breath she must have been holding back shoots out of her mouth. Jake takes her gently by the arm and leads her to the door where they speak in quiet voices. She smiles at me one more time, then hurries out the door, the salty water still streaming down her cheeks. If I could, I would lick her face and nudge her hand and sit with her, but I know my true place is with Connie. There are lots and lots of dogs in the world, and Dinah will find her dog, or her dog will find her. That's how it works. I belong with Connie. Come on, girl, Jake says. Let's go see Doc Collins. Oh, I know that name. Doc Collins. It belongs to the man with gentle hands and a gentle and the gentle voice. He smells like medicine, but gives lots of treats. I like Doc Collins a lot, but I'm here to see Connie. When we pass through the door behind Ava's desk, I hear dogs barking back in the kennels. Near the end of the hall, I smell a whiff of Connie coming from the room where she used to move papers, but something is wrong. Connie's smell is old. She hasn't been here in a long time. I glance up at Jake. Just then, Doc Collins steps into the hall in the funny coat he wears that brushes the big part of his legs. Oh, Stella girl, he says. Enough with the old oh, Stella girl. Don't they know I'm here to see Connie? And why does Doc Collins smell sad and anxious? He's never anything but calm and cool. Put her in my examining room, Jake. I need to weigh her and find a syringe. Okay, Doc. Jake bends down to pick me up and cuddle me to his side. He never handles dogs like babies. Jake is serious and focused on work, always. Which means something is terribly wrong. 
Doc glances at the collar-like strap on his wrist. Just let me finish with Esperanza, and I'll be right back. Jake takes me to another room slathered in dog and medicine smells. I expect him to place me on the cold, slippery table. That's what happens when humans bring dogs into these rooms. Instead, he sits with me in his lap, rubs me behind the ears, and speaks lots and lots of soft, slow words. It's not your fault, Stella. You're a good girl. You deserve better. Nobody wants you to suffer. He rubs his face against my neck. Doc's been doing this a long time. He says the kindest thing to do is put you out of your misery. That you'll never be the same without valuable work and a competent handler. I understand the good girl part, but I don't believe it. If I were a good girl, Connie would be here to take me home. If I were a good girl, I would have directed Connie to the bad chemicals faster. I wouldn't have been confused by the air blowing in through the open doors. And then Jake and Doc Collins wouldn't have to put me out of my misery. I know what that means too. I was in the hall when they put Sarge out of his misery after the accident in the snow last winter. It means they put you into a deep, deep sleep and your dog smell changes. You're just the outside of a dog and you don't wake up ever. They put you in a box. If they put me out of my misery, I'll never see Connie again. I whimper like a pup. Jake rubs his face against my cheek. I lick his hand, hoping he'll change his mind and give me another chance. I will not dig holes or tear pads or squat on the carpet. I won't chase rabbits. I'll even work at the airport if Jake will give me one more chance to be a good dog and find Connie.